Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and another Last Epoch talk. Today though, I've got my short and sweet beginner's guide for the game, specifically for my fellow brand new players who are going to be trying the game for the first time with its 1.0 launch, February 21st. Now I've read and watched a lot about this game and as usual with ARPGs and guides, people have been going into crazy detail even in beginner stuff, even talking at length about endgame stuff, which is not what I want this video to be. I want it to be straightforward, just the main things that are going to be instantly helpful to at least be aware of and be able to rely on the basics so with that said let's just get into it so let's truly start from the beginning where you'll start where you pick a class and a character these are the five base classes but each one of them comes with three masteries that they kind of ascend to from these options you then basically pick the real class you're going to play and it's a permanent choice so you will need to consider properly what you want to do obviously if you click on one you're going to get information about these masteries like the sentinel here who can become a void knight a forge guard or a paladin before we talk about the classes just be aware that we will choose a game mode as we go in and i strongly recommend that you pick standard as usual you'll find that there's a hardcore mode so when you die that's it and a challenge mode with character found this basically means you can't go into a party you can't be doing any trading like that it's even more restricted than hardcore i think 99.9 percent .9 people are just going to pick standard and i would also recommend that you pick whatever the current season is they're called cycles in this game since we're going into 1.0 and kind of beginning that that will be relevant in the future if you're watching this video later but standard on the current cycle that's kind of the choice you should probably be making. Now on the topic of classes, as I said, we have those five original picks, but then you choose between their three main options. And while I'm not going to be going into any detail on these in this video, these are going to be your basic options. You have the Sentinel, who can choose to become either a Forge Guard, Void Knight, or Paladin. You have your Acolyte, who will turn into either a Lich, Necromancer, or Warlock. We have the Primalist, who becomes a Shaman, Beastmaster, or Druid. Next, we have the Rogues, who will pick from the new 1.0 class, Falconer, or original options like Max or blade dancer and then lastly of course we have the mage who will become either a sorcerer spellblade or rune master by comparison each and every class starts with that kind of base mastery to work on it's this kind of progression tree where you can pick things and you have this line that progresses as you spend points you also get to pick up special abilities from committing to that and progressing that at the bottom but yeah it's just passives very potent passives and at a certain point you will then get to choose to master one of the three for that class so in the case of sentinel here i could pick void knight and then what that would do is remove this chain in the middle and allow me to progress through here all the way to the end of this passive tree. But what's interesting is how I can actually go to the other masteries even then. I could look at Forge Guard or Paladin and still spend points on the left side of the chain. The chain will remain because I've not mastered this specific class, so I don't have access to the stuff on the right, the really juicy endgame stuff for that class. But I at least am able to pick up things from both Forge Guard and Paladin and have that be relevant to my Void Knight in this example. Also, super cool about this game is how every skill, every ability comes with its own skill tree, as you can see. So initially you'll have like, I don't know, three options that are going to be pretty bland, like help reduce a cooldown, make it have some sort of passive healing, that type of stuff. But as it's a skill tree, you go down a route and quickly you'll find something pretty interesting, like becoming invulnerable while I'm using this lunge, turning it into a more fire focused style attack rather than physical, or say vice versa, go down like a void route. Or I could change the way it works by changing the size and shape on angle of the attack, turning it into kind of a rectangle AoE instead of a circle around me. This is for every skill for every class in the game. There's a ridiculous amount of combinations and it's nice that you can kind of freely experiment. Obviously, if you were to use a guide, you'd have kind of specific choices to make and follow. You don't have to follow a guide to min-max your way to max level, assuming you have, you know, experience with ARPGs and you're willing to do a little bit of reading and considering. Okay, so now we're in game. I'm just going to show you a couple nice little quality of life features. The first thing is when you hover over anything Thing and hold alt as you can see it'll let you know if you hold alt it'll give you more information here i can learn about this ability and find out that hey it's actually strength scaling and i'm getting four percent increased damage per point of strength that i have so this is going to be a primary stat for me and this applies to anything like i can hover over my boots and say oh five percent increased movement speed well that increases how quickly you can run this feels really obvious but as we go it's going to give us a lot of very important information for example with the armor
armor, it tells me that that reduces damage I take from all hits, except for damage over time, and is particularly effective against physical damage specifically. So anything you're not aware of or certain about, you can just hold alt and it'll give you some extra information and hopefully give you the exact information you're looking for. If you want to go really in depth though, you can also just press G. This brings up the game guide, which tells us everything there is in the game, little information about it. So if I want to know how bleed as a status actually works, I can click that and have a read about it. Let's say I want to learn about the resistances of this game. How do they work? What are the caps? Do they have them? Apparently resistances are one of the few ways to mitigate your damage over time stuff and resistances cap at the select and standard number in these games, 75%. Overcapping will not increase the damage reduction. If I want to learn something specific without scrolling, I can just type it in and this brought up the crafting menu. I can get a basic explanation of how crafting actually works right here. So if you're ever not sure about something really specific and niche, you don't need to Google it or go anywhere else. There's literally a system built in to tell you exactly these details. Now there's a couple of really nice quality of life things in the inventory. So it's like Diablo 2 or like Path of Exile, which was inspired by that system, where we have different shapes and sizes for your loot. Obviously when it's equipped, it's fine, but we have a thin shield that's taking up six slots total compared to the four slots of these boots. So inventory management's going to be very important. But the Sort items button here does it for you and it does it fantastically in a really logical way. Instead of kind of cramming it together and leaving awkward gaps like this like it does in other games, they've really made sure that it works well so every slot becomes min max to its maximum potential, meaning no slot is wasted. It's really nice. Also, as you find materials in the world, of which obviously this new character has none, they will go into your inventory. But the moment you press this button, transfer crafting items, it'll send it straight to your stash so you won't have to worry about it. So if you're ever having issues with your inventory, you you can just press the transfer crafting items button and then press sort and you probably end up with more space than you had before to keep going and interrupt the grind less. All right, so now some important mechanics that you'll benefit knowing the basics about. Firstly, loot filters. Loot filters allow you to, well, filter out loot. But first, everything you see will have a value, right? Just get some items to sell and have some basic gold to spend on anything at all. But before long, you'll soon not be needing to see every item that drops. Greys and commons might quickly become irrelevant to you. And long term, you're going to be hunting specific gear with specific affixes. And then most things are going to be almost useless to you. So by having a filter on, you can just choose to not see these things when they drop, if it's not relevant to you. So by using the keybinds shift plus F at the same time, that should open the filter menu. And then yeah, it's just nicely in game without any third party faff. Here you can choose to manage it how you want to. Maybe add a couple of specific options as you go, or just follow someone else's setup to keep it simple. Long term though, having a filter set up so that you're only seeing things that are relevant to you and you build plans is gonna make your life much easier. So the sooner you engage with it, the easier it will be. Next, we have crafting, which you can just kind of do at any time, pretty much anywhere, by pressing F, bring up the menu, and putting an item into that slot. Crafting allows you to take an item and place a passive benefit onto it. So instead of RNG getting the drops you need, you can take an item and put what you want. Say you're lacking health in the early game, or probably element resistance. You can take an item, put some of that on, no problem. This will require some of the various materials that you'll be constantly gathering from through the game, but it really is that simple. There is limits to say item quality, setting how many affixes that item can actually have or forging potential, which limits how much one item can be manipulated. You can't be constantly crafting and changing one item forever. You do have to be careful how you do it, but that's something long-term to worry about. When we're leveling, it's basically grabbing something you need and slapping it on. Because you're gonna be getting lots of basic materials to do basic crafting, you shouldn't be intimidated about it. In fact, you should be expecting to do it quite early in the game. Speaking of which, vendors will sell runes of shattering which can be used to destroy items and then gather the materials from that item, which will be important before long. So my advice is to initially sell anything you don't need at first. This will give you like a stock of gold to work with. And then later when you're getting higher quality drops, you'll have the runes of shattering, at least a few of them to use on those items to get important resources. But yeah, ultimately crafting is as simple as slapping a relevant stat you need onto an item or make just a good item even better. Last up though, when you hit the stash, I just want you to be aware that it's awesome. You'll be able to spend in-game currency to buy new tabs and increase its size, so not bought with real money, thank the lord. And there's going to be a potential 200 tabs to work with, which is absolutely insane. You can filter and organize it in many convenient ways immediately. There's a search bar right there, ready to find whatever you've dumped in there. You might wonder, why is this relevant or even impressive? It's because I come from Diablo 4. We have very little in that game in terms of quality 
quality of life. Even having to wait multiple seasons just to get stash filters. So, you know, these systems, these quality of life features being there right away, it's a breath of fresh air for a D4 player. But yeah, that kind of covers the really basic details. I just want you to be thinking about going in. I want this video to be short and sweet. So in regards to the end game, don't worry about it as a beginner. Just progress the main story. Unlock your character's different options like the idle slots, your passive points, and so on. And when you finish that campaign, you will unlock the different endgame systems and sink your teeth into that. By then, we plan to have some nice detailed guides on those topics when we're there ourselves. But yeah, that's the video. I hope this guide has come out straightforward and simple, just touching on different important topics that will help you immediately as you go. If you guys have anything you think you should add that maybe will help other new players, then you can drop it in the comments. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. I'll see you in Last Epoch. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.